What's up everyone, Matt here, and today we are checking out five ways to use guitar rig on sounds that aren't guitars. I have a commercial sync style track that I've produced, and it sounds cool but needs some flavor to give it a unique character. If you don't already have guitar rig, you can download the player for free or get $50 off the pro version during cyber season, which gives you access to all the amps and effects over at nativeinstruments.com. I already have a few instances of guitar rig on different sounds, and I wanna show you the before and after, as well as how I found the presets and made adjustments to them to fit my song. By the end of this video, you should have a better idea on how to manipulate guitar rig components, tweak various parameters, adjust the preset mix level, and more. Let's do the thing. Before we jump too far into this breakdown, here's a little bit of what to expect. This is before guitar rig. And this is after guitar rig. This is the session right here, so we're gonna start by just playing the verse back and then we'll get into the piano. So again, it's a commercial sync style track, something you'd hear in an ad. And I wanna start with the piano, which I already have guitar rig on. And before we get too far into it, let me just give you a quick breakdown of the layout of guitar rig. Over here on the left-hand side, this is where you're gonna find your presets, all your individual components. This is where you're gonna be able to sort through different attributes, such as the input sources, characters, amplifiers, things like that. You can also search for different presets or attributes right here. In the middle, the main window here, this is where all your components are going to be. So any amplifiers or effects or anything that's going to affect the signal, it's gonna be right here in the middle. Over here on the right hand side, this is actually new to Guitar Rig 7 and it's the signal flow. So it actually shows you how the signal is being passed through, which effects and which components. Let's solo the piano without any effects on it. I'm gonna turn off Guitar Rig. This is already a nice piano, it's from Piano Colors, but I knew I wanted something that had really heavy compression and I wanted it to sound super clunky, something that you'd hear in like a modern hip hop song. So I actually just went over here and searched for compress. And what's really cool is when you're searching for things, this search isn't just gonna search for the name, you can actually see the name is Dandy Twang, but there's a compressor inside of this preset. So I went to search, searched for compress, and uh, just click through a few of these until I found one I liked. This one pretty much had exactly what I was looking for. All I did was adjust this EQ a little bit and change the mid range, and that's what gave it the sound. You know, sometimes it's as simple as just clicking a random preset and making adjustments for it to fit your sound, and that's exactly what I did here. I typed in compress and found one that I really liked, and it just really gave that piano a nice punch. Let's hear it with the effect on. Off. On. That was the piano. Now let's check out the synth arp that I have also in the verse. Let's solo it. I have guitar rig bypassed. So this is a sequence happening from duets, and it already sounds cool. I just wanted to give it something a little bit extra. So let's open up Guitar Rig. For this sound, I used the attributes. So I went to Input Sources, and I selected Sequence Loop because I'm running a sequence through it. You don't have to do this. You could select keys or pads or whatever you want, even if it's not the sound that you're processing through it. I also selected Modulation under Effect Types because I wanted the sound to evolve and grow as it played through. So once I did that, I actually just used the preset shuffle or randomize button right here, and I just clicked it until I found something that I really liked. And that's a really great feature. It's something I use very often because you get those happy accidents, and that's one of my favorite things in Guitar Rig. So once I found this preset and the components, I noticed there was two instances of flare. If you click right here, you can open up the component and see 
more of the parameters with inside of it. And all I did was I changed the pitch to E0 because this track is in E minor. So this flanger is playing a lower pitch and this one here is playing a higher pitch, E3. Other than that, I opened up the quad delay. Originally, this was not synced. It was just set to milliseconds, which is fine, but I wanted mine to sync to eighth notes. So I clicked that, changed this to eighth notes, and let's turn this on and see what it sounds like. Hear that delay? This without it. And what's interesting is Duets actually has a delay on it and it's playing like a dotted note. So you're getting a mix of this dotted and eighth note quad delay happening here and it's really cool. So that's what I did for this sound. One important thing here is, and I did this on most of the sounds that I sent through Guitar Rig. When you open Guitar Rig, this is actually gonna be set to left and it's gonna be running a single or mono channel through it. So if you're using a certain instrument or sound that's stereo, you're gonna to wanna to switch this over to stereo. So that way you're getting that nice wide sound or if you want it to be mono, you can just keep it on left for mono. But that is a, another thing that I did to this sound here. And let's play it back within the whole verse. So you see that delay kind of hits with what the piano is doing, which is really nice. You've heard some cool elements from the verse. Now let's play from the verse into the chorus, and then we're going to talk about the brass. That's the chorus of the track. Let's just set a little loop here, and we're gonna talk about the brass. On the brass group, you'll see I have two instances of guitar rig. Let's open up the first one, and this is the main one that's affecting the sound. So let's just solo it, and I'm gonna bypass it. And here it is on. With this instance of guitar rig, I already had an idea of what I wanted my brass to sound like. I knew I wanted it to be distorted, kind of trashy sounding. So what I did was I went to effect type, I selected distortion, and then I kind of went through some of the characters, amplifiers, and then under genre, I selected hip hop. because again, I wanted something that was kind of cool and modern, and I thought distortion brass was definitely the move for this one. Once I did that, I went through some of the presets, found one that I really liked, and it sounded great. I didn't really have to make too many adjustments. These components were already open for me, so I adjusted some of the saturation amount and dirt, changed the compression a little bit, and the only thing that wasn't included in this preset was this instance of round down here, this reverb. So what I did was I went to components, selected reverb, and I saw realm, and I just dragged it over, and if you drag it, you're gonna see it shows up right here in the signal flow. We don't want another instance, but that's just to give you the example of how it works. Over here, you can hit this little X. You can also bypass it, but I'm just gonna delete this instance. So that was the only thing I did. I added round to it just to give it a little reverb and made the adjustments for how I wanted it to sound. This is without the reverb. You're already getting some of that natural room reverb from the instrument itself. This is with realm. Just a taste, it's all it needed. When I'm making these types of ad or sync tracks, I like to take elements from my chorus and then bring them over to the intro. Kind of gives the listener a little hint of what to expect later on in the song. The important thing is you have to be tasteful when doing this. And how I did it in this track here, let's go ahead and play the intro back. <laughs> So you're hearing that brass right in the intro, but it's just not as aggressive as it is in the chorus. So let's solo the brass again, and it still has that first instance that gives it that punchy, distorted feel. The second instance of guitar rig here is actually a lo-fi preset. And what I did was I just went to lo-fi, and I went through a few of these presets until I found something cool. 
once I found something cool, I actually automated it. One thing I use quite often in Guitar Rig is this preset volume feature here. And to access this, you click this icon right here. That's gonna bring it up. And then this is just your dry, wet, and then the mix between them. And again, I use this all the time for automating the presets in, or if I just don't want as much of the preset on the sound, and I only want just a little bit, go in here and you can change the mix. In the automation tab, you can see the preset mix volume is being automated, and it slowly turns down as the verse comes in. So it's all the way up for this intro. And then as the verse comes in and that first stab hits, then it turns down and it doesn't happen anymore in the chorus of the song. Other than that, for this preset, I just turned off the noise machine because it was a little too noisy for this type of track. So all I did was click the power button here and turn it off, just bypassed it. And this, this sound was literally ready to go. Again, I didn't have to do much. It was a cool sound and it really made my horns uh, have something flavorful and, and tasty right in the beginning. Back on the chorus, I also have a synth bass from Massive. I'm gonna turn off guitar rig so you can hear what it sounds like. It's playing the same melody as the horns. That's it without guitar rig. Let's go ahead and turn guitar rig on. So really cool preset and what I did here was I went to the search and I just searched for sidechain because I knew the brass was just a little too aggressive and I wanted it to kind of modulate and move a little with the song and kind of create some bounce and energy. So I searched for sidechain, I selected synth as the input source and this was the only preset here. So I, I clicked auto sidechain and this is what it's doing. This is the preset itself. It didn't have the ensemble so let's just turn that off for now. And what's happening here is there's a step sequencer and this step sequencer is going through just two steps, one and two. And between those two steps at a tempo of eighth notes, basically, it's changing the input trim of the compressor. And what this is doing is it's turning the compressor input up about 25, 26 decibels. And by turning it up, it's making the compressor react and compress the sound more. So it's kind of reverse in a weird way, but it's it's basically compressing the sound on every count. So I'm gonna turn a metronome on so you can hear it and you'll hear it every time that metronome hits, it sounds like the bass is being pushed down in the mix. You can see it. Off. On. It's really cool. I liked it. It kind of gives the track some movement. Other than that, I just went over to the components tab and I went to modulation. There was the ensemble. I thought the brass bass sound was really cool, but I wanted it to be a little wider, a little bit more stereo. So I just put an ensemble on here, which is basically just a chorus, turned up the intensity a little bit. And this is what it sounds like with that. With the brass. And that's what makes up the main part of my chorus. I've shown you guitar rig on a piano, a synth arp, brass, and a synth bass, but guitar rig isn't just for instruments. You can also use it on vocals, and that's what I'm doing here. I had this vocal muted for the chorus. I'm gonna play it back, let you hear the vocal loop, and this is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like in the track. And again, cool vocal loop, just needed some flavor. So let's solo it and turn on guitar rig here. And with this one specifically, it was a mono input. So I just have it on left here. What I did was I went to effect type and went to modulation. And then for characters, I went to mashup. And within mashup, uh, there was all these different presets. You can actually see here, I have a couple colors on here. What's really cool is you can select these and right click them 
and actually basically set favorites based off colors. You can have different ones. You could say like, oh, I know my guitar presets are orange and my synth presets are purple. But I found this preset and when I opened it up, I saw all of these tractor components and I have been using tractor components forever. I love the slicers and the gators. So to see those in guitar rig was just like, yes, I have to use these. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn all these components off. We're gonna add one at a time so you can see how it's affecting the sound and I'll explain what's happening as they do it. So let's just go ahead and bypass these. And we're gonna start with the first two here. Up top, I have a beat slicer and this is being controlled by this sequencer. And what's happening is every time this fader is up, it's slicing and when it's down, it's not slicing. So you're gonna see a little meter here move when the fader is up. This is happening over 16 steps at, a t at an eighth note tempo. So already that sounds super cool, right? And again, watch this meter every time it goes off, it's not slicing. And this pattern is happening based off this style here, and you have a few different styles to choose from and different patterns within those styles. <laughs> So that's just one instance. And then I have another beat slicer, and this one's happening, same thing, 16 steps, but at a tempo of 16th note, so it's faster. And it's kind of backwards, it's off, and then it turns on for the last two steps of every four. So I'll turn this off and let you hear that one, and then we'll turn them both on. <laughs> So you can hear how much faster that, that slicer is. And let's put them both on together. So you're gonna mix of slow and fast slices, which is really cool. Let's keep going. We'll turn on the gator. Again, I'm just gonna bypass these. So the gator's just doing 16th notes and it's basically just kind of cutting the volume out a little bit based off the shape that I have set. And with everything here, this is what it sounds like with the gator on. So again, we're getting a lot of movement, a lot of glitches and, and different stutter effects happening, which I really like. Other than that, we have a delay, turn the delay on. Quarter note delay, and we have reverb. And these are all happening, the delay and reverb are happening at the end of the chain. So all of this beat slicing is happening before it. So when you have all these on, this is what it sounds like. Here it is off in the track. And here it is on. And that's five ways to use guitar rig on sounds that aren't guitars. If you like this video, hit us with a like or a sub. And if you want to learn more about Guitar Rig, check out the video, How to Use Everything in Guitar Rig, with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.